Hey everybody, and thanks for jumping on, joining us for another episode of The Layer. My name is Caleb. I'm your guys' host every single week. We're a youth group based out of Everett, Washington called True Life Youth, and we're glad you chose to join us for another conversation. Um, last week, we switched it up. We're in a new location. We have a different thing going on. But you know what? We're just trying to make the best possible podcast, video, all that stuff that you guys could experience. So thanks for jumping on. Thanks for joining us. Hey, really quick, help me out. Comment down below. Would you be interested in this podcast becoming an audio only podcast we're thinking about it we're considering it it's going to be a bit of work but it wouldn't be worth it and you guys can tell us that so comment that down below but right now we got a couple guests with us today it's going to be a good time we're gonna have some good conversation and so help me out and let's welcome jacob davis and kennedy kane back in to the layer I clap every time I walk in. Yeah, you just clap for yourself. That's okay. That's all good. Um, Well, good deal. Welcome, you two. It's good to see you. Good to have you. Kennedy, welcome back. Jacob, welcome back. Kennedy was with us last week, first time in Mm -hmm. the new set. Yes. And so, yeah, we're back. We're doing it again. And so every week on The Layer, we just like to have some natural conversations, being able to talk about things, talk through some different topics, stuff like that. Um, But we always like to be able to connect as a community for just a little bit. And so really quick, to our guests, how are y'all doing? What's been going down? You have anything interesting happen the last week or so? I got some new discs yep. for frisbee golfing. Okay. Um, disc golfing. Ha- sorry, disc golfing. Disc golfing. I used to call it frisbee golfing when I I used to go all the time, and by all the time I mean probably like I probably went like four times. Okay. But it was within like a month, so it felt like a lot. And then we stopped, and I just haven't really gone since. But then we went with um, the twins with Sean and Jeremy. And I just, I missed it. And so I went out and got my own discs mm-hmm. and I picked purely based on color. Mm-hmm. So I got a pink one, a purple one, and a pink one. And I got a little teeny tiny orange one. Nice. That's my favorite one. It's so useless. Fun. It was windy when we went and I threw it and it literally would like went with the wind. And I was like, all right, cool. We don't count that one. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, that was fun. Nice. Um, in... Here, pivot your mic oh, for yeah, yourself. Can... Help you out. I about that one. Um, my, I had my sister come in for the last, um, she was here for a couple of days last week, so that was a fun, um, just getting a chance to be in community with our family again. Like, not like a bad thing, but like, um, my sister, we had our, unfortunately our dog passed away, so like, my sister got to come in for that and like, just spend some quality family time, um, together, so which is really good just to have that time, yeah. Yeah, well, very cool, very cool. Um, anything happened for us, me and Sierra, Got some outside furniture, outdoor furniture, because yes. adulting, growing up, and so we have like a little <laughs> patio thing, and so we went and bought these like two, um, they're like padded, they're not rocking, sh- they're rocking type chairs, but they're not like old school rocking Are chairs. Are they just kind of like bounce, kind of? No, like they fully rock, but oh. like I'll post I'll post pictures on social media nice. probably. You can check them out there cool. if you want if you want to explore our <laughs> patio. Caleb underscore, underscore Smith. What's your Instagram? No, it's Caleb Smith three three three. Oh, sorry. Caleb Smith three 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 outdoor patio uh, luxuries. So that's a Wait a second, is it actually that? I forget. I forget. It's either CJ. No, it is that. It is that. Oh, yeah, it is. Your ex- I'm thinking of your gamer tag. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, well, good deal. Fun stuff. So. You know what? Let's dive on in. Let's have some conversation. So I was thinking about with you two in terms of like trying to think about what could we talk about? What we could we converse about? (laughs) Um, Something that we've been seeing happen for us in true life as a community is we have been diving in when it comes to generosity. Now we are filming this before our next generosity night. And so we don't have an update with where we're at currently over the year. We've raised about $2,500 and then another $2,000 were given by another family that was like hey this is awesome awesome. let's partner with this so true life like you're responsible for like forty five hundred dollars going to speed the light which is amazing 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 and so i just want to talk with you guys for a minute because you guys have been a part of this entire process when we've been talking as a youth staff team things like that you know we started to say hey we're just going to say this matters because it does and we're going to partner with speed the light we're going to dive in with generosity when you guys think about speed the light giving to missions giving to these kind of things what is something that like i don't know like what is it that inspires you to respond in generosity i think for Sorry. <laughs> I think for me, 
a big part of it is I've gone out. I've I've been to Africa twice, and so I've seen like in person with with my own hands. I've felt like what our money goes towards, and I've seen it in a practical manner. And I've also seen the need. And so for me, it's just it's something that God has placed on my heart. Just the the realization of the the need that's out there, and yeah. um, just how desperately these people need to know Jesus. And so just the reason that I give is because I've seen it, I've been there, I've experienced it, and now a little chunk of my heart is is in missions and it's in it's in generosity and giving to, yeah. for example, speed the light. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a bigger answer. Um so like my <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> bigger answer. No, so like um so like my just like if you didn't know, I have a heart for missions. My my like calling um my career for missions and like that's yeah. just like who I am at the core front of who, um, just where my heart is. And like, um, like Kenny said, I've gotten the chance to go to four different places now um, across the world and just see see the need. Uh, last year I got the chance to go to Albania. Shout out to all y'all. And like we, um, they had a major earthquake a couple months earlier and you could just see um, just where they were at, one, in their hearts, um, and two, in like their just needs as community and their yeah. housing because like building store down water doesn't work like truly like needs that needed to happen immediately that no one was acting on yeah and like for us we get a chance to um just partner with people in that so we partners with speed the light a couple months ago and said hey like we want to be a part of this again um you know true life recent history hasn't had a great track record with just giving and generosity and we said hey yeah we want to have generous hearts out of what the Lord has given us. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah, in past years, just so you guys know kind of some history, we shifted towards doing like local ministry outreaches, stuff like that, which is still awesome. We still partner with that through our uh, Bethany Compassion Center, the BCC, and all that they do. We love being able to serve with that. Um, and in specific moments, give to that. But in recent history, though, we just stopped kind of having an emphasis yeah. on global missions. And for us in this new season, we said, man, God, how can we partner with global missions? And, you know, something for me as your guys as youth pastor that me and Sierra my wife as we've kind of processed what the mission field looks like we very much so have just seen and prayed about and felt the Lord lead us to the realization that man God like our local community as is, is as much of a missions field as other countries but that doesn't mean we don't partner yeah. with the mission field in other countries. Mm -hmm. And something that we read in Scripture and we see time and time again is that when we honor God, when we're faithful to God in one area, God is still faithful in every other area. Mm -hmm. And so for something for us is true life that we truly believe is that as, as we are giving, as we are sending money out to go around the world to help young people, old people, people of all generations and peoples and countries and all of this— all around the world, as we're sending money out to help them, we know that God is going to help our community yeah. to reach more and more people here. Yeah. And you know, there's something about when you start to put your money generously towards a cause, especially a cause for pe seeing people served and saved in the name of Jesus, that makes you get so much more passionate about it, even here at home. And, you know, actually for you guys, I just love to continue this conversation. Yeah. Then, you know, we're looking at generosity going out, but then when it comes to generosity going out, you know, have you guys experienced then where then God's put kind of a passion in your heart for then the at home kind of mission, the at home um, goal of reaching people and seeing people receive that yeah. hope of Jesus. And what does that look like, I guess, for you guys? Yeah. I have an answer. Um, <laughs> so... Just this past, um, I know you both, you know, like I have a calling for missions and like desperately just want to go back. And like this last year just haven't been like, not the need to go back, but like, okay, like God's just telling me like, you're, it's okay for your heart to be here for a season of life and being like, okay, God, like how can I still serve you during the season missions minded? And like a big thing for me has been prayer. Um, you know, during this last week with um, just the, unfortunate events happening in Israel and that was just diving deep in my heart of yeah. how like Lord how can I pray for these people mm -hmm. um, one how can I pray for people who have different views of me that was something that I've struggled with all my life and being like okay Lord like these people are having tragic events happen to them day in and day out that shouldn't be happening to them 
and two, how can we pray for the Christians there, um, one, the Christians that are living there, and two, the missionaries that are there serving the people. And that's yeah. been a core thing on my heart is prayer and, like, how can we be partnering with them in that? Um, one thing that Pastor Rob has always said, like, you know, if you're not going, you're a sender. And part of a sender is finances, prayer, and just being a supporter. Totally. And those are three things that we can do on the ground here. And, yeah. Yeah. And even that doesn't just apply for, like, globally. Like, yeah. you can still be praying for your community here. And yeah. so for me, like, when we get home from these global missions trips, I don't know. I, I mean, clearly it's the Lord stirring in my heart. But I just – you get, like – on a like a like a kick like you get a little yep. like missionary high where you just like <laughs> want to be like to everyone like, hey do you know jesus <laughs> hey do you know jesus and so it for me just it being reminded when i come home about like i just served in this amazing country and got to see how beautiful it is but also yeah. y- you miss home and you realize how broken our community is here and so really the lord just puts on my heart and i mean he puts on i'm sure your yep. guys' hearts as well that our community's here. Like, there are people in need here. And so, just like you said, like, praying um, for our communities, too, and just incorporating that along with – I always have, like, a missions prayer where I pray for other countries that are in need, like Israel. I, mm-hmm. Africa's always on my heart, like I said. And um, uh, with that, I also put in our communities as well, and our yeah. local communities, like the mm-hmm. Everett community and um, just Snohomish County, Washington yeah. in general. I would say, like, one thing – sorry to take the mic from you again. Uh, one thing I've learned um, – that was it was like one of the first things I learned like when I started having that heart for missions is missions isn't just across the world but it's across the street mm-hmm. so like yep. we can't just have the missions minded when we're across the world but we need to have the missions minded wherever we are we need to be serving our community in the best ways possible whether that be um, through just acts of whatever or just prayer or finances whatever ways that we can support one another that that having that missions minded wherever we are totally yeah. you know one of the big things is just like when it comes to ministry and more so life in general is we'll get really comfortable. You know, we'll get really comfortable with where we're at and we'll stop feeling this pressure to drive and pursue and to um, just have a desire to see more and more things take place. And like Kennedy, you mentioned this, like sometimes you go on to a missions trip or you might go away to another country and you get back and you're kind of fired up, you're charged up. Well, a part of it is you've gotten to be removed from the comfort of your normal rhythms and like, not just like, not just your mind and your emotions, but your spirit got to have a different kind of charge to it where then you're getting to come back and bring that energy, that excitement, that passion, that drive back to here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we see this, um, you know, kind of a, for some of you, maybe you haven't really thought about this before too much. That's totally fine. But we see this sometimes in America when it comes to like church planting movements, which are amazing and awesome. And obviously the world could always use more churches because that means more people are getting served, more communities are being formed. You know, I think about this for BCA. Like we are a church in Everett, Washington that serves a lot of different communities throughout Snohomish County. But you know what? Everett is a city of like 104,000 people. We don't got a building that can support 104,000 people. We need a lot more churches. We need more communities, that sort of a thing. It's amazing and a good thing. But we'll see people when they go into like a season of church planning where their kind of immediate team, their community will get really passionate about reaching people in their community for Jesus. Mm -hmm. But then we start to see as a church gets more established, Mm -hmm. they'll start to get really comfortable And they might not have that same drive. Now, it's not that you have to live at 120% all the time, like gas pedal to the floor trying to go. But it's important that we remember, God, my spirit, my soul should have a desire to see more and more people know about the hope of you. How can I do that in practical, small, achievable ways Mm -hmm. regularly and that sort of a thing? Um, And that is bringing then this mission field mindedness back to us at home and a part of what i love then about us partnering with like speed the light in our giving is it's a moment where it might just be you putting money in a bucket or sending it off through the app or the website whatever it may be Mm -hmm. but it's a moment of separation from where you're at right now and saying this is about to go somewhere else where is that going and it starts to get us excited and realizing we can have an impact Mm -hmm. everywhere with what we're doing um kenny do you have another thought yes i was just (laughs) you you talking about that just made me think that 
Like, maybe you're not like Jacob, or I also have a heart of missions. Like, maybe you don't feel like you're called to go out to Africa, to Egypt, wherever. Um, that doesn't mean that you're not a missionary. You can be a missionary in your hometown, like we're saying. And so even those moments, like, being here, being a missionary in your own community, but also you can still serve communities throughout the entire world while still being here. Like we said, mm-hmm. we've, we can reach communities yep. in other, in other countries just by you giving your money and just being obedient. No. Totally. Totally. You know, for, um, me, I've only gone on one missions trip in my life mm-hmm. and I got to go to Camelou, Mexico. And that was my sophomore year, something like that. <laughs> sophomore, junior year of college. And, um, you know what? Like I loved it. Like it was an amazing trip. I hope that we get to go back all of this different stuff. And then I went out of country to go to Israel on a kind of an excursion trip, getting to go experience the country and kind of travel around it and see spots that Jesus was at biblical events, stuff like that. But something I was thankful for is that my church growing up and something that we do here, I didn't grow up at BCA, but I'm so happy to be a part of this community. Um, and BCA does this really well too, just like my home church did is helping give you a picture of what happens in the mission field, even if you can't go. And so you might be somebody that's like, I don't have a desire to go out in the mission field. That's okay. But still have a desire for what's happening in the mission field, even if you're not going to go there. Mm -hmm. And so I think with all that being said, that's kind of a good spot for us to pause this conversation. Um, Really quick, if you guys don't mind, comment down below. Um, Are there more things you'd like us to talk on when it comes to missions, to generosity, to giving? Again, we just want these conversations to be natural. We hope they're ones that you guys enjoy. So let us know how you'd like us to continue them, to carry them on, that sort of a thing. But with that being said, that's all we got for you guys. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with somebody, comment your thoughts. Um, But with all that being said, thanks for checking this out. We appreciate you guys. And we'll see you next time in The Lair. Deuces. Deuces.